Well, I'm about to note this. Fear. Fear! Okay, I bet I have watched that video before reacting, and now this is the second video of the Let Me Explain Studios from Rebecca Parham, and this topic is going to be about her childhood fears. Hey folks, Son of Beast here, and our last video I've done was, it was the getting recognized stories, when basically noticing when Rebecca would, went out to meet one of your audiences here at one of the other shows, but many years ago, um, if you guys don't remember this, but um, it wasn't the start until that. It was totally where it begins by a post-pandemic. Well, you may never know what's going to change, but you may always know what's come across for your mind if you see somebody, someone, you know, like a YouTuber who have already shown up. But in that case, you, you may guess at what it is. So... When I think of what uh, one of a YouTuber who has already went there and take a look what's going on around, I might just ask that, wait, you look familiar. Are you Rebecca Parham? Are you Bryson or any of our guys that look like famous, like similar? I was just noticing if there is. I couldn't believe it. Well, not everybody who was really concerning about that. But anyway, let me go ahead and take the next one. Now, her story wants to go with some fears that she didn't like, and then revenge time. Well, I guess that it's going to be a start on the day, so anyway, let's get started. I'm about to react now. Oh, hello, my geeks and peeps, my explainers and entertainers, my little oodle lollies. Rebecca Parham here. Uh, so this is a little embarrassing, a possible design flaw. But my elevator swing is, uh, stuck. But don't worry, I called for reinforcements earlier. Wait, you did? I thought you were kind of, like, stuck up there for once. I thought you had a great view. Wait a minute, d d is the does that mean, like, your swing is not moving anything? I didn't expect that. So, do you think you could get here soon? Ah, oh, thanks. Great, you're a lifesaver, buddy. Yeah. Oh, for real. Uh, and that's your brother, were you saying? Or or that's not really it. That's not your brother. I, I, I don't know if it is, but I'm not guessing. Yeah, no problem. I'll be there in a flash. Okay, bye-bye. Hey, wait a second. Yes, I know I'm a tune and I could technically survive the fall, but the landing is still painful and the way down is still very scary. Of course it is. Of course you know Bryson that gets pains everywhere. You probably may notice that. And I'd rather spare myself the fear, thank you. So until the cavalry arrives, why don't we just chat? Yeah, let's go ahead and chat. Let's see what your story is about. Fear is a funny thing, isn't it? If you've seen Pixar's Inside Out, you know that each of your emotions has a job to do that's essential to your survival and overall well-being. Fear's job is to keep you safe, stop you from doing stupid things that will hurt or kill you. Physically, emotionally, and socially. Oh, it's interesting. Didn't even notice it was going to happen like that. When I basically watch the Inside Out, I basically know what's going on. Right between the rainbow colors, but a little disguise, a little joy, sadness, fear, and anger. Well, these are the ones you may have recognized at that point. But it's not going to change everything until Inside Out 2 comes out. But now, that movie is already out. You may expect it if you wanted to watch it on the TV well, it's streaming on now. I mean, you gotta, like, see what you get. I mean, that's the point. You gotta make a cruel world to the people who can definitely have imaginative everything. But fear lets you know, like, don't do anything stupid stuff, all right? I mean, I understand now. But sometimes fear makes some strange decisions about what it perceives to be a threat. Mm-hmm. Yes, I see your point about this giant cliff. Very big, very scary, very dangerous. Yeah, I mean, most people will never do that. Unless if they're daredevils, maybe they would jump off a cliff and then have a parachute ready. I mean, come on, guys. Do you think it's really going to be impossible to do that? But, uh... Why? Oh, no. Oh, no. It's a cloud. Nah, I'm kidding. I, I, I don't get scared by that. 
When we're kids, fear is a kid too. It hasn't figured out the world yet. It doesn't know what it's supposed to be afraid of. I don't trust that vacuum. But that strange man offering free candy out of his white van? Now that's the picture of trustworthy. Didn't expect that when it used to be holding a lollipop. Right there. When I was a kid, my biggest fear was loud noises. And by extension, I feared anything that made loud noises. Most specifically, fireworks, those door stoppers that go... Oh, okay. I, I, I noticed that. But the door stopper doesn't hurt, hit mine. Because, of, you know... Well, it always stays there. I mean, it doesn't go boinging around like that. I mean, good thing I'm safe with that. Didn't get fear with it at all. And especially balloons. Oh, the balloons. Oh, yeah. Pops up every time. And just realize, you know, I mean, it's a lot of air. It could be like blow up, rip apart, and then kaboom. Hate that. But I'm not doing it again, all right? Not for this. But kaboom, like the balloon exploded. Popped in the air. Got to know that. My mortal enemy, we meet again. Really? Is that your mortal enemy? I didn't expect that. A balloon just had to be in the room and I would side-eye it suspiciously the entire time. Like I thought, any second now it will inexplicably pop out of nowhere. And then I'll die. I was talking to my mom about this old phobia of mine, and she told me this story from when I was three years old. I don't personally remember this incident, but it certainly left a mark on my mom. One weekend, my parents took me and my sister Rachel to the circus. The whole three rings. Clowns, flying trapeze, tightrope walkers, uh, you get it. Now- Yeah, hey, I always know I always get it. You know that? I remember the circus too. I don't and have never had a fear of clowns, so I didn't mind when the painted jokesters emerged, driving their comedically small vehicle to perform the classic clown car gag. The car drove up, the door opened, a clown avalanche occurred, and then as the car was being driven away, it backfired out its tailpipe, and it backfired incredibly loudly, like- Wait, like very loud? Oh boy! The blast of a shotgun, complete with special effects flash and puff of smoke. Oh, so really? It almost turned out to be like it's a canyon. I could describe that one with a feeling. Wow. So that got your trick in mind, didn't you? My God. And I, sitting in the stands with my family, was so horrified by this sudden loud noise that I stood up, put my hands on my ears, and just- And what did you do? Just started screaming at the top of my lungs. What? Just standing there, screaming. It's like I thought, if I'm just louder than the loud noise, I shall win the day. My oh, for real, didn't you? I wouldn't expect that I wouldn't scream like that. I mean, I mean, what's the kids are going to know that? I mean, if something loud happens, I mean, it could hurt their ears. I mean, they could definitely just scream very loud or, or suffer and crying and like tearness in their eyes. I mean, like a temper tantrum. I mean, I couldn't resist that anyway, but, but make it clear on that, all right? My sister Rachel must have thought, oh, I guess this is what we're doing now, because she quickly followed suit, standing up with her hands on her ears, being the harmony to my melody of terror. I didn't get taken to another circus until I was 11 years old, and it was Cirque du Soleil. Oh, the Cirque du Soleil, hey, I remember that one. I totally like the Cirque du Soleil shows. And the last time we went there in 2019 was the one at Treasure Island to see one of those circus performances. Oh, that's amazing. And I really enjoyed it. As an adult, I can say I pretty much grew out of this fear. Me and balloons, we're back on speaking terms. Oh, that's pretty interesting. Pretty cool. But if I'm honest, there's still a small part of me that doesn't care for sudden loud noises. If you ever watch me during a fireworks show, you can see a teeny tiny little micro flinch every time one of those big mortars goes off. It probably looks like I have a nervous tick or something. Now another fear I had growing up was oddly specific, but maybe it's one a few of you can relate to. I was absolutely terrified of the feeling of flying out of your seat on theme park rides. Oh, but I'm not. I'm more like a theme park enthusiast. So that would be me. I am the most roller coaster fan in America. No. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, I, I, I'm not the big, biggest uh, fan of the number one coaster that I really loved, but 
I was not really, like, scared of anything, but as you may have already noticed that one of my friends were actually scared, so when I basically noticed I was just holding their hands, and I felt like they're going to fly off the car, and they feel like, oh, no, 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 there's a lap bar. I mean, I'll tell you what. I mean, a little kid, I mean, you just definitely realize that you're, you're feeling like, you feel like you're eager to go on, but sometimes the problem might be, like, your head is feeling like, oh, no, oh, no. I mean, I'm definitely not going to stay alive, and, you know, I'm going to fly off the coaster. I mean, help me, help me, help me. No, 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 no. Like, I know the kids are definitely kind of a little bit of, like, in a panic mode, but let's say this. I mean, I am never, I'm never scared of anything. But the only thing is, one of each rows, I feel like I can hold my breath. And you know what? You can't let it win anything. Well, I know she definitely didn't really like one of the roller coasters back then. But it seemed like this might be the only place what it is. Dare to enter the coaster if you will. Okay, I don't know why I said that. You know, the thing that people actually like about theme park rides? The thing they stand in line for 90 minutes to experience? Anything with a steep drop in it made me think I was going to die. It oh no, I mean, I, I don't know, I mean, <clears throat> I mean, closing your eyes, they gazed out, I mean, oh my gosh, I wouldn't go with that. It could be a roller coaster, a log flume, a shoot the shoot ride if you want to get theme park nerdy. But my absolute nemesis growing up was the drop tower rides. Oh, your drop tower rides. I mean, that's what caught in your mind. The big tall towers that suddenly drop you. One of them. Oh, I see. All right, the drop towers. Okay. Uh, oh, wow. I mean, oh, and this is the one that we went on. I remember this one. It's the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. And yeah, I basically remember that one here. A couple of years ago in 2022. Basically remember this, <clears throat> well, you know, I think it was supposed to be in 2010 before 2012, and then 2022 was the year after decades. And, you know, that's the part of it uh, for a decade of 2022 to from 2012. And, you know, basically that happens most of it all the time. And, yeah, I mean, I believe that this one is in good operation. I might say is that it's a drop tower. That's what I just said here before. The most famous drop towers is the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror over at Hollywood Studios in Disney World. This ride was my worst nightmare. You see, Disney is really good at setting a mood and psyching you out before you even get on the ride. Theming, as they call it. And I was very susceptible to all of that as a kid. I had a hard time remembering that this was all make-believe. So a drop tower themed as a creepy haunted hotel with an elevator that will kill you? Yeah, that was maybe a, a little bit of a trigger for young me. I mean, I thought that was going to happen like that. I thought I was going to be scared and I thought like it was all going to be dark. And I felt like something was going to happen. So I felt like I want to step out of the ride. But minutes later, after we ate like somewhere, I think that we finally had made our way back to... The uh, Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. And I felt like, nope, I'm never a fear of that. This might be the only best drop tower at Walt Disney World Resort of Disney's Hollywood Studios. So it probably might be that. I mean, couldn't guess. And very often on our Disney vacations, an adult had to wait outside with me while everyone else enjoyed the ride. So when I was about eight years old, I was still dealing with this fear. And mom and dad saw this as a teaching opportunity. Time to face one's irrational fears head on and learn that there are far more terrifying things in this world than an amusement park ride with eight million safety regulations built into it. So they made me get in line for the Tower of Terror. Oh boy, I mean, and this is what happens, is gonna happen to her. And sure enough, I got psyched out as we were walking through the creepy, elaborately decorated line. Oh, I mean, it's pretty nice decorative line. I mean, I know it's like a hotel, but sometimes cobwebs, I mean, I felt like it gets pretty scary because I thought there's spiders there too, or bats. Well, that's not really true. 
But it's just a decorated design for the queue line. I mean, that's all you can care for. Before the basement sends you down right toward where the elevator's at. Just note that. I was literally shaking, begging my parents to not make me do it. And when we got to the front of the line and sat down in the front row of the ride car, I had finally hit my limit. Oh, no. I put my head down and just started sobbing. The whole car of riders went silent and stared at me. Mom and Dad knew that I didn't need to be there anymore. Oh, boy. Oh, oh I can see what goes in there. Well, I felt like, okay, I guess I'm ready. I don't know if I am, but wish me luck. I mean, that was back then, but Rebecca, I know, I know it's a fear. I know it's kind of scary with that point. I, but hey, a lot of people feel like they're, one, they're afraid of it. I mean, they never really liked it. But some parents thinking that it's kind of too dark, maybe we would say it's like, oh no. Not my favorite ride to go on, but but for me, I always wanted to go back on. I thought the Manjaro Drop of Doom would be open, but unfortunately, it got closed out. I was very disappointed again, so hopefully it could reopen back up, or they could just close down for good and then make another new way to just only make a tower. Not on King the Ka, but just the tower structure. I mean, I don't know what to say, but it's going to change everything. The cast member in charge leaned down and very gently said to me, My dear, I cannot start this ride if you are crying. And from the depths of my tormented soul, all I could say was one word. <gasps> Good! Oh, oh okay. Uh, alright, alright. I, I understand what you're saying. I heard what you're saying. I was let off the ride, much to my relief. And it wasn't until I turned 13 that I finally faced the Tower of Terror. As a child, I feared you. But I am a child no longer. Question for all of you. Did a certain movie or TV show really scare you as a kid, but then become your favorite when you got older? Oh, uh, um, maybe that? Not really. Because that totally happened with me. Oh, for real? I couldn't expect that. Well, I know Bryson avoided uh, haunted horror movies. I mean, he's, he's avoiding things. I mean, <laughs> he's a lucky kid. I mean, just getting away with that. I mean, can't believe it. But I watched one of the horror movies. I mean, that could be one thing that's definitely not so well at all. But um, that's always what you care for, Philip. Man. I couldn't even believe it, but that's all it changed. Until by young adult, you will make a favorite. Like, Alice in Wonderland really freaked me out as a kid, especially the Cheshire Cat when he disappears that first time, leaving only his smile. Now, I am a sucker for anything Alice in Wonderland. Jurassic Park terrified me as a kid, and now it's my favorite live-action movie. Oh, that's good. Really nice. I don't know, maybe we all eventually become fascinated by the things that scared us as kids. Or maybe we all stay traumatized. After all, what is adulthood but a constant state of dealing with past trauma? But you know what, I'm gonna go on record and say that I think a little bit of fear is healthy for kids. Because if we never get scared, how can we learn to be brave? So maybe the balloons and theme park rides and creepy grinning cats of your past taught you a lot more than you think. Uh, definitely taught me. A lot more what I think. I mean, gotta improve it all. Hey, Rebecca! Wait, who's that talking to? I'm here! What? <laughs> what the heck is that face? Okay, I had never seen it like this. Lottie? Well, what are you doing here? I called Tom for help. Well, you see, Tom realized he's, you know, in London. So, he called Jaden to ask her to do it, but she was busy, so she called James, who called Emiriju, who called Cypher Den, but she couldn't make it because she's in New York. So, Den called Tabs, who called Illumination, who called her Night Invader, and I just happened to be in the area, so he called me, and here I am! For real, huh? Well, I mean, 
I did move out into the woods in the middle of nowhere. What else did I expect? Yeah, we all thought that was kind of antisocial of you. <laughs> well, thank you for coming all the way out here, Lottie. You think you can help me down? You know, we are tunes. You could survive the fall if you just jumped down. But she didn't want to do that. I mean, it would be painful enough. I don't want to jump down. It's scary. Face your fears, Rebecca. Lottie, no. No, no, no. Don't do it, Lottie. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Do not. Uh. Uh-oh. Ah! Uh. Oh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Ow, that is going to be a pain. Wow. That's kaboom right on the ground surface and in a pile of dirt. Wow, that hurts. That hurts. Wow. You're welcome. Anything else I can do for you? <laughs> You got it! <clears throat> Thank you so much for tuning in, but now we got to tune out! No, you're welcome. Dang it. Thank you. Bye! Yep, yeah, bye. No problem. I'll be there in a flash. Bye-bye. Oh, Tomsica. Oh, interesting. Wait a minute. Aw, oh, jeez. That's quite far away. I probably won't be there in a minute. Mm. Whoa! Uh, let me know if those are all good, uh, and I will, I, if they're not, I'll just, I'll be crushed. I will be despondent. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I, I couldn't resist more. Anyways, so that was, that was pretty, like, insane. I mean, give it to you, Rebecca. I mean, I would say is that it's a, it's a 10 out of 10 stars for the childhood fears. The last thing I did was the infamous swoosh. Weird childhood obsessions, and I guess you might be able to watch that one here too. So, I got yourself a calling card if you would like to go check it out. But in the meantime, I'm about to wrap it up. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you all again for your next Rebecca part of Let Me Explain Studios. And of course, probably we'll keep an eye on here on Ethan B zero two hundred six again. Okay, and I expect. One thing that might happen is a change off for anybody. So that could be a change into my opinion. Probably. Well, it may not be anybody, but you may guess it that when it happens with your childhood fears, you know, sometimes it gets in a way. Well, my fear was that it was the THX that popped up with its logo and it was the worst nightmare that I had happened. Um, since I was just a little kid, but you guess that it is really loud and you can basically noticing that it gets right toward the ears of it and you're feeling like you're in fear and you're in panic and you try to cover up your eyes, but basically you the sound always hear things and what behind it now is from the surrounding speakers right at you. You couldn't feel it when you hear it. But this might be the change that definitely shocked me the most. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's probably that kind of bad idea, but hopefully I might just stick around for the next skit soon because, you know, it sometimes happens with the worst fears in my life, and it's definitely the worst thing that just happened to me. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and Childhood Fears was absolutely, like, incredible, so... I know that it's not always easy enough when you think, but keep in mind, like, try to avoid some stuff here, and then try to close your eyes, cover your face with your eyes, and, yeah, I mean, just try to, like, you know, avoid it. That's all you can care for. Anyway, thank you for watching, and thanks to Rebecca Pardon. I'll keep an eye on the next video. Anyways, peace out, folks, for a while, as the fear of the childhood nightmare dial. And this is Chris from Son of Beast. I hope you all enjoyed it. And I'll see you guys in the next one.
Be sure to follow me on my social media, like the video, hit the icon bell, and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you all again for the next video. Take care, everybody. Somebody will.